today we're leaving we're leaving no matter what <laughs> the fact that we're able to do what we want now go sailing go out and about just go about normal lives is such a sweet sweet feeling i'm happy nika's happy life is good Two slip lines, I can take the boarding ladder in with me. Take the mid off and then we'll do the stern and the bow at the same time. Alright, take the mid off. Alright, up at the bow. heading out for the first time well this year and we uh, are leaving La Rochelle for the first time in 10 months Nick just informed me so last year we tried to leave twice and both times we came back for two different reasons I'll link to the um, videos just here or there I don't know um, but today we're leaving we're leaving no matter what <laughs> I don't care if this boat sinks on the way to the next marina, we're leaving. And um, it's a beautiful day for it. You okay? Yeah, I'm just testing out my vertigo. But you may also have some... Oh, you've got some inflammation in your neck muscles. You may pitch a nerve when you move your neck up. Well, I don't know the exact mechanism, but that's what he said. He said it could be directly related to the whiplash. Yeah. Like, the whiplash itself causes like vertigo. Yeah. <clears throat> so he said it's either it's either the, the knock on the head or it's the whiplash itself. Bloody knock on the head, that's what you've had, eh? And the knock on the head, actually, it just, it's not the injury itself. It, it's because it dislodges, like, bits in your ear. Yeah. Um, Bits in your ear. I don't know. The, stuff, the stuff that's in your ear. Drop, ear drop. <laughs> the ear stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then the whiplash. I don't know how the. Yeah, you're right. It must be like inflammation or something. In all fairness, for a shakedown sail. Oh, it can't get better. Yeah, I mean, we've got five, four knots of apparent wind, but we're motoring into the wind. And uh, so I think the apparent wind, looking at the kind of glassy sea state, is probably about two or three knots. So, yeah, yeah, we're also punching a lot of tide. We're only going three knots, so yeah. Uh, 4.7 knots, darling. Oh, that's a depth. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, someone uh -oh. needs to get back into sailing again. Get rusty. So, we need to go from here, Ishi. And literally, at the moment, I just want to test the motor and it also, and we've got to get to here. So, that's about. There's that. That is. Exactly 10 miles. Wow. 10 miles to like. To the mile. <laughs> to the mile. 10 miles to the mile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling. <laughs> Missing in the night. 
So just to keep you updated, um, <laughs> I fell off the boat a couple of days ago, um, probably about four days ago now actually, and um, oh, I didn't catch it on camera, which is a real shame really, because it would have been pretty spectacular, I think. But um, I, I'm fine. I was do, washing, uh, hanging up the washing, and I kind of leant backwards because the boat moved a little bit. I went to grab the guardrail behind me, but I didn't realise that I was standing at the opening where the um, the, the boarding ladder is. So um, I just fell directly on the pontoon, onto the pontoon. I literally just like toppled backwards like a tree. Um, took, grabbed onto the washing line. It snapped took the whole washing line down with me uh, anyway the glasses th these are not my normal sunglasses uh, my glasses came off my head and fell into the water and I'm pretty sure they broke as well anyway I'm fine but the couple of days after that I had um, whiplash like um, sore muscles in my neck and uh, since then, in the evenings, uh, not in the evenings, overnight, uh, while I've been in bed, I've been getting some vertigo. If I like wake up in the middle of the night, then I get vertigo, which I've never had before in my life. And I called my brother-in-law this morning, he's an ENT surgeon, um, and was like, uh, should I be worried? And anyway, after quite a lengthy discussion, he was like, it's because it's something, yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna go into it, but Basically, the vertigo is due to either the bump in my head, which like dislodges like stuff in my ear or something, um, or is actually directly related to the whiplash. Point being is that I have had a bit of vertigo uh, over the last few nights, but particularly today. Um, and every time I look up the sky, I get it, it comes upon me quite quickly. So I was worried that I would be feeling a little bit uneasy being back on the boat or being underway that I might be, get a little bit seasick or something but I feel fantastic <laughs> I feel a million bucks I'm just so happy to be out um, this is just such a great feeling I'm, I'm just uh, and to have the sails up and to be actually sailing and to have just a very very gentle breeze just kind of you know, pushing us along on such a gorgeous day in France, you know, particularly, I guess it's particularly sweet at the moment because we've just come out of, you know, months of lockdown and we've had our, I guess, all of our um, liberties repressed, uh, in my opinion, necessarily for the last three months. But the fact that we're able to do what we want now, go sailing, go out and about, just go about our normal lives is such a sweet, sweet feeling. So I am pumped, I'm so happy. And Nick is happy, he's uh, bustling around the boat, just doing all his little bits and bobs. He's at the shrouds at the moment, checking the shroud tension. Because this is the first time we've had the sails up since we had the mast put back on. We had the jib out uh, when we sailed up to La Rochelle, but we didn't put the main on. So this is the first time I've actually had the mainsail up since uh, stepping the mast last July. No, yeah, jeez, July, almost a year. That's insane. Time just goes by so quickly. Anyway, I'm happy. Nick is happy. Life is good. Life is so good. Very, very grateful feeling very grateful right now we're very lucky the two of us so lucky all right so i think it's time to actually plot ourselves a little course to um get to where we're trying to get to today because we're not actually we're almost on course at the moment but not quite so we are going to a place called uh, saint denis de Laurent, which is a i've probably pronounced that incorrectly i do apologize to all the french speakers for my terrible accent um which is an island, uh, yeah, about, where are we? It's currently 7.7 .7 miles away and we are um, gonna spend a few nights there at the marina. So let's go. So this is where we're trying to get to, this marina here. So we'll put a waypoint, I guess, just there. And then navigate to, route to, bump. 
Yes, engage. So we've got a cardinal boy here, um, and it's a west cardinal boy, which means it is to the west of a some kind of danger. Yeah, thank you. Today, yeah. So, and that is a south cardinal boy, which means it's to the south or something. So ideally, we should go between these. Um, two cardinal boys so if I can add a turn here and go like this add turn okay so now we've got our route but other than that there's nothing along the route that will be any issue we've got plenty of depth as I said between the two cardinal boys I'm sure that I could just go straight across here, but you know, play it safe, eh? But we are facing the wrong direction for some reason. Why is that? Just, I created a um, route, but we're not, and I thought that it was, uh, the autopilot was engaged, but it doesn't look like it is. Was it just doing its thing? Where I think it's because of the last time we really used this was on, um, it just, it, it's got a slow response time because we're a sailboat. We're only going 1.6 knots. Yeah, I think we have to get the old uh, iron top sail on if we want to get there before dark. That may also be why. Low water was at nine, so we're at half tide going in. So, uh, okay, that's. So the low chart data is 1.3 at the moment. That's low water going up to six. Okay. So we're going to have about between 1.3 and 6. Let's call it 2 over datum to be really conservative. So it doesn't drop below 0.4. But by that point, we should have enough. So we should have two. We've got enough to get in. Yeah. Now. How far away are we? Uh, we are about 1.2 miles from your waypoint and that's another mile. Okay. Just approaching the marina now and um, what do we say, we're about mid-tide, so mid -tide. we think- I'm On a rising tide. On a rising tide, so we think that there'll be plenty of water. There is a buoy channel to get into the marina, but there's a sill at the entrance to the marina, um, which we have to get over, but I, I don't think that will present any problems. So we're just keeping an eye out for the buoys. We're just trying to spot the channel which I can't see at the moment. Probably if we go in and we've got, I think we're going to be mooring up starboard side. Okay. If we go in, if we turn around, that's we port side. <laughs> so we don't know. <laughs> I think probably it will go in and just come in ports. We'll go in, I think probably we'll moor up starboard. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Three meters, Nick, at the sill. You've got loads and loads of space. Four meters. Bring the foot bow over a bit. All right, stop. Uh, the old upper body's been to a pre-season. Uh... It's actually 
kind of like a back spring. Yeah, I think you're too tight at the bow, no, babe. Okay. It's okay, I'm just not close enough. Alright. Good job, babe. <laughs> Come on, you. So this is Il Dolorum. It is just beautiful. This is absolutely my favourite way of exploring a new place. Is going on a little cycle ride. <laughs> Perfect way to end the day.